You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear an agent calling from Farrelly Mutual about the recent homeowner's insurance inquiry. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello? Yes, I'd like to speak with Janet Evans, please. Speaking. Hi, Miss Evans. This is Jim Rodriguez calling from Farley Mutual about your recent homeowner's insurance inquiry. The man says that he'd like to speak with Janet Evans. So, Janet Evans has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Hello? Yes, I'd like to speak with Janet Evans, please. Speaking. Hi, Miss Evans. This is Jim Rodriguez calling from Farley Mutual about your recent homeowner's insurance inquiry. Yes, hi. Thanks for returning my call. My pleasure. I understand you are potentially interested in insurance for a bungalow located a bit out of town. Could you give me the address? Sure. It's 49 Greenway Court. Greenway is one word. Thank you. All right. And would you prefer to be contacted via email or phone? Either one is fine. Maybe try emailing me first, and as an alternative, I can give you my phone number. Great. And what is your email address? pk2 at cat.com <clears throat> Did you say cat as in the animal? Yes, it is the acronym for the construction company I work for. I'm sure you've seen them around. Yes, I have. And could you give me your primary phone number and the best time to reach you? Sure. The number is 020 four two five one nine double four three I am generally unable to answer my phone at work but any time after five thirty p.m. is fine I will make a note of that here now I'm going to ask you a little bit about property itself so we can make an accurate estimate of the cost of insuring your home could you tell me the size of your house mm, well I don't have the exact measurements but I'm pretty sure it's right around 80 square meters should I measure it and call you back later? No, that's completely all right. I'll write 80 square meters for now to get the estimate, and then an agent will come get the exact measurements later on if you decide to purchase our insurance. OK, great. And what material is your house made of? For example, wood, brick, stucco? It's mainly brick. Great. That will give you a lower rate than most of the materials, since it is so strong. Wonderful. And do you have any sort of home security, Miss Evans? Mm, we don't have a fence or anything yet, but we have an alarm system that we use regularly. Good. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Now I'll go through a number of things we offer coverage for and I'd like you to tell me which items you want your policy to cover. OK. We'll start with the building itself first. Would you like us to cover incidental damage to the structure to your house? Absolutely. Splendid. And the contents inside your house. We usually cover all items with an appraised value of about £200. Would you like us to cover theft and damage beyond natural wear and tear? 
I will let you know that the second option here will come with a considerable increase in your rates. I think I'd just like the contents of the house to be covered against theft then. All right, and would you like any other insurance? Fire, flood, etc? Yes, I definitely want flood coverage. It rains a lot here, and the drainage system in the area is not the greatest. Okay, I am calculating your quotation now.、Uh, it will just take a second. It looks like your annual insurance rate will be £148.30. Thanks, that seems somewhat reasonable. I would like to take some time to think about it. How long does it take to begin receiving coverage after signing up? It depends on the time of year. It can take anywhere from two to six weeks. I would say if you sign up by July the 1st, you could start your coverage by August the 1st. I see. OK, a y thanks for your help. Should I call you back at this number when I have made my decision? Yes, please. And so that we can look up your account faster, I'll give you a reference number that you should provide when calling. Ready? Yep. It's TR278Q. Got it. Thanks. Thank you, and have a nice day. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a talk about a pool and outdoor venue created by some people. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Hey, if you're just joining us on WKPX The Sound, welcome. We're here in the studio with Matt and Cam in the morning, and this morning we're talking about keeping the kids occupied on summer vacation. Folks, there's a new kid in town in the world of summer fun. Get ready for the Pool of the People. A pool and outdoor venue created by, that's right, the people. Scheduled to open in November, the ideas for everything from the design of the pool right down to the items sold in the snack bar have been decided upon by a sample of 1,050 members of the public. The public selected two top proposals from over a dozen created by renowned architect Ned Mosby, and the final design is truly something else. The pool is shaped like a fishbowl, sinking down into the ground. And there's, you guessed it, a real live fish tank in the centre. It's certainly the centre of attention in the Bridgewater area. Now, you are probably wondering how much an extravagance like this must cost, right? Well, have no fear. At just £15 for adults and £10 for kids, it's an affordable way to entertain the kids in those dog days of summer. The only problem now is the possibility that it will in fact become too popular. The pool is only so large, so swarms of people coming to enjoy it may cause quite a crowd in its first summer of opening. There will be an opening party for a select audience, and in line with the pool's mission, the people have decided on all the arrangements. They collectively decided on actress Rebel Wilson to host in the festivities scheduled for later this month. And even dictated the playlist by ranking their top 10 songs from a list of hundreds. There is some discrepancy, however, on the sculpture design for the foyer at the entrance. The people elected a jellyfish sculpture to greet entering visitors, but given last week's vicious attack by a box jellyfish on a local youth, coordinators fear it will bring too much fear to patrons. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. The theme of the clubhouse is set to be International Waters, with a different section representing each continent. Designed by the legendary local artist Roberta Anuzi. Representing Asia in the reception area will be a mosaic made up of prominent animals indigenous to the continent. 
a camel, a panda, and the Siberian white tiger, to name just a few. In the West Lounge, feel the cool, icy vibes of the Transantarctic Mountains of Antarctica. Makes you cold just thinking about it, doesn't it? Just seeing a wall with a mural of the glacial mountains is almost enough to cool you off on a December afternoon. Almost. Why not make the trip to the pool a social studies lesson at the same time? The theme in the ladies' lounge room for Africa may not be what you expected. A safari? Drum music? The Nile River? No. Did you know that Africa was home to the first jewellery? I sure didn't. By contrast, as you may expect, North America's theme for the card room is as modern, even futuristic, as it gets. A nuzzy created for North America a sort of absurdist print, interestingly juxtaposing the moon landing of 1969 with an abstract depiction of humans living on Mars. Seems to me like an interesting commentary on the future of space exploration. And in the men's lounge room, the ancient forts of Sparta, Rome, Greece, and other European civilizations fittingly exhibit the strength and combatant characteristics of these societies. Finally, the cafe and breakfast room area is an enchanting round room that draws all attention to its center, where there is a strikingly realistic sculpture of a volcano. The delicious food may actually be only the second most exciting part of this room in comparison to the nine foot statue, complete with brightly colored molten lava to characterize South America. Honestly, it is like a museum visiting each room of the clubhouse. Why not make the trip to the pool an educational one for the kids? We're going to take a quick commercial break here at WKPX, but we'll be back in 10 with more on what's touted to be the summer's hottest place to beat the heat. That is the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a discussion between a business student called Marco and his personal tutor about the courses that Marco should take. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23 on page 5. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Hi, Marco. Come in. Thanks. I've got a bit stuck trying to select courses for next semester. Could you help me, please? Of course. Sit down. Oh. First of all, most people just go for the areas of business that they're interested in. But even if something doesn't look very stimulating, it's important that you can use it once you get a job. It's not much good choosing areas that aren't going to be helpful later on. Right. I want to go into management, so I'll need to think about that. And should I start specialising in a particular area yet? I don't think that's wise at this stage. It's better to aim for a wide variety of subjects, especially as management covers so many possibilities. You shouldn't be limiting your choices for later on. Yes, I see. You should also look at how the course is made up. Will you have regular seminars and tutorials, for example, as well as lectures? OK. Some of the lecturers are quite big names in their fields, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Should I aim to go to their courses? Well, remember that the lecturers who aren't well-known may still be very good teachers. I'd say we have a consistently high standard of teaching in this department, so you don't need to worry about it. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30 on pages 5 and 6. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Good. Well, that's a great help. Now, last time we met, you mentioned doing team management, didn't you? That's right. I'm still quite keen on the idea. Mm -hmm. The trouble is that because of changes in the content of various courses, team management overlaps with the Introduction to Management course you took in your first year. Oh. 
So what you learn from it would be too little for the amount of time you'd have to spend on it. I'll drop that idea then. Have you had a chance to look at the outline I wrote for my finance dissertation? I left it in your pigeonhole last week. Yes. Why exactly do you want to write a dissertation instead of taking the finance modules? It'll be pretty demanding. Well, I'm quite prepared to do the extra work because I'm keen to investigate something in depth instead of just skating across the surface. I realise that a broader knowledge base may be more useful to my career, but I'm really keen to do this. Mm, right. Well, I had a quick look through your outline, and the first thing that struck me was that you'll have to be careful how you set about it, as the way you've organised it seems unnecessarily complex. The data that you want to collect and analyse is potentially valuable, but you'll need to narrow down the subject matter to make the whole thing manageable. OK. I'll have another look at it. I was talking to Professor Briggs about it yesterday, and I got some more ideas then. For part of the dissertation, I was thinking of trying to persuade finance managers from three or four companies to let me ask them about their company finances. Mm -hmm. If not, I think I'll have to change to another topic. Well, go ahead then. I could give you some names. Thanks. Now, let's talk about practicalities. Your dissertation must be finalised by the end of May, so you should aim to finish the first draft by the end of March. Is that feasible? Yes, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll need to register for the dissertation, won't I? Is that with the registrar's department? No, it's internal to this department, so you just need to let the secretary know. Do that as soon as you're sure you're going to write the dissertation. OK. Then, to analyse your statistics, you're going to need some suitable software. If I were you, I'd drop into the computer office and ask them for a copy. Right. So, if I revise my outline... Can I... That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4 on page 7. Section 4. You will hear a talk about a research project on the tiger shark. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40 on pages 7 and 8. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the research project I've been involved in on the tiger shark. First of all, some background information. The tiger shark, also known as the leopard shark, is often thought to have got its name from its aggressive nature. But in actual fact, it's called that because it has dark bands similar to those on a tiger's body. It is a huge creature, growing up to lengths of six and a half meters. It can be found just about everywhere throughout the world's temperate and tropical seas, but it is most often found along the coast rather than the open sea. In terms of feeding, tiger sharks tend to be most active at night and are solitary hunters. Their preferred prey includes other sharks, turtles, seabirds, and dolphins, to name but a few. However, it's not uncommon to find garbage in its stomach. This is because it tends to feed in areas such as harbors and river inlets, where there is a lot of human activity. Now to the project itself. We are particularly interested in some studies that have been done in the Rain Island area. Observations here have shown that there is a large population of tiger sharks present in the summer during the turtle nesting season. However, during the winter months, the sharks disappear. So we decided to do some of our own research there. The first step was to tag a number of sharks so that we could follow their movements. To do this, we first needed to catch the sharks. Early in the morning, we baited lines with large bits of fish and set them in place. 
These lines were then checked every three or four hours. If no sharks were caught, the baits were replaced. Once a shark had been caught on one of the baited hooks, it was pulled in close to the boat and secured so that we could carry out a number of brief activities to aid our research. This usually took no more than about ten minutes and was carried out as carefully as possible to minimize any stress to the shark. Each of the tiger sharks that we caught was measured and fitted with an identification tag and also a small amount of tissue was taken for genetic studies. For some larger sharks over three meters long, we also inserted into the belly a special acoustic tag capable of sending satellite signals, while on other large sharks we attached a camera to the dorsal fin to enable us to study the behavior and habitat use of the sharks. After this, the shark was released and we were able to follow its movements. So what was the purpose of all this tagging? Well, while we were already familiar with some aspects of the tiger shark's behavior and food sources, what we hoped to do in this project was to see exactly what factors affected the migration patterns of tiger sharks and whether it was in fact food, weather, and reproductive needs. These are some of our findings. On February 21st, a large female shark, whom we named Natalie, was attracted to our research boat at the northern tip of Rain Island and fitted with one of the satellite tags I've just mentioned. No transmissions were received from Natalie between April 2nd and April 29th, indicating that she didn't surface to feed during this period. The area in which she was last reported is very shallow suggesting that she may have changed her feeding preferences during this period to focus on prey found on the sea floor. We also made a number of other discoveries, thanks to the various transmitters we used. It seems that tiger sharks move back and forth between the ocean floor and the surface quite often. This may help the sharks conserve energy while they swim, but it probably also helps them hunt, since this movement back and forth maximizes its chances of not being detected by its prey until the last minute. So far our findings have not been conclusive. However, we have gained some very interesting insights into the behavior of tiger sharks and are now hoping to develop our research further. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.